What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with a game called Roboco. Now we've played Roboco before in the past and there have been a lot of updates since we've played it including like new missions and all sorts of stuff but it's a robot sandbox building game where we build cool little robots like this guy here which I didn't build, the devs built this but we build little robots to accomplish certain tasks but there's a lot of really cool parts in Roboco. If we actually take a look at the parts menu there's just a whole ton of really, really cool stuff. We have our motors, we've got rods, we can actually put any kind of joint between two blocks. We can have stuff that pivots, rotates. We've got hinges as well, but we've also got like really cool mechanical stuff. There's CV joints, constant velocity joints, universal joints. There's also a complete differential, elevator mechanisms. There's a whole series of gears that actually work. And apparently there's floor sweepers now too, lasers, servo motors, you know, you name it. This game has it. telescopic pistons, powered LEDs. But anyway, it's a really cool building game. And what I wanted to actually do is kind of work on a real car. I've tried this in Scrap Mechanic many times, but Scrap Mechanic gears kind of suck. And Roboco is just a game that has pre-built gears already. And, you know, it's got claw grabber arms as well. Oh, and a vacuum for sucking. That's, uh, that's amazing. But anyway, we're going to build an actual car, and I want to try and build a car that, you know, has a differential, has suspension with double wishbones, has axles going down to the suspension with proper CV joints on it, and we're going to make a rear-wheel drive car with a front-wheel steering mechanism, and also with proper gears to the back, and if that works, then maybe in a future episode, we'll try building something that's fully, like, four-wheel drive or whatever with, like, all the differential systems. But for now, I just want to try and build a car that's like, you know, really basic. So we've got a differential here. We're going to use that on the back wheels because that's awesome. Now with this differential, we deliver power to the purple gear and it feeds to these blue gears in the middle. Um, so we're going to need to have some axles coming out of that. So we're going to start by just building right off the differential because we could just do that in this game. It's kind of awesome. And then we put our rods and everything in this game can be rescaled. So it's kind of super convenient. Like we can just grab this and scale it out. No problem. So we are going to drive this front gear here. And in order to do that, we're going to have to have the differential offset because we're going to need a gear that meshes with that like this, right? Um, I need to actually put a snap point for this gear. Hold on. So let's build a frame around this. Let's put, you know, just a, a lovely little piece like that. And actually we should scale this through this. And if we go to our joints menu now, we can say that we want this to actually not be a fixed joint, but in fact a rotating joint. So the rod can rotate. It's a square rod, but it would basically make a bearing in here. And you don't have to actually place bearings like in Scrap Mechanic or anything. So it's really kind of cool. Now, we're not going to build a complicated transmission for this. I might do that in a future episode at some point in time. For now, we're just going to feed it with a single DC motor in the front, expand this out, and of course throw a gear on it. All right, perfect. So those gears are meshed. And this would be the drive axle coming from the, you know, front of the vehicle. So we do have an offset differential. Uh, you can't put the differential in the middle because there are two purple gears. So if we were to move this differential over, right, it would mesh across both the gears. And that just, you know, that just wouldn't work. So this would come from our engine. Well, transmission would be up here. Engine, transmission, and then down to here. Maybe at some point we'll do that. But this is our back frame. And now we need to build this into a crazy double wishbone suspension setup. So in order to do that, we're going to put a CV joint on either side. This is awesome. This game is actually, it's so much fun to build with these kind of systems. I mean, obviously you're supposed to build, you know, robots that accomplish tasks, but I still think it's a lot of fun to try and build a whole car in it, because why not? So we need a double wishbone suspension. We need to pivot about the CV joint at the same spot as the CV joint, which I think would be like expanded out one. So if we grab this and we expanded it out to here. I think we need our double wishbone to pivot right at that point. So then in order to put the uh, suspension itself, I think we're gonna do it, we could do it with pipe pieces, right? How would pipe pieces look? Eh, not really, we could do it with pipe pieces. A little bit harder though, you have less places to mount stuff to with the pipe pieces. Now we're going to do it with, with just regular blocks. So we can kind of just do this, one by one by seven. One by one by seven. Perfect. And then we put another one in the front here. Right? And then we go to our joints menu again, and we just set this to rotate. Oops, on each of them. There we go. So that can rotate, that can rotate, that can rotate, that can rotate. And they're just free rotating. So now that whole thing is like a floppy double wishbone setup. And then of course, to provide it with some suspension, 
we're gonna need a suspension piece to hold this up. Um, there is one suspension piece. Here we go. We've got a spring, so we don't put it in the middle there, but that's the spring we need. And we have to put a separate pivot for the spring that attaches to something like this. So we can put the pivot there, we can put a spring here, and then this piece has to attach back to this frame piece. So we need to make this pivot, and this pivot, and that should be a double wishbone suspension setup. Which is impossible to show. Why did my gear fall off? Oh, because I'm using the wrong type of gear. There we go. I had to use that kind of gear. Perfect. Now it won't fall off. Excellent. Um, so this is a double wishbone suspension setup. We can actually put... We need a wheel. There's still there's still a drive axle problem. And actually, this axle, this whole suspension setup should be forward one block. With the axle, like, mounted... Actually, no. The axle will get crushed if it's mounted in the middle of it. The axle should be mounted somewhere. It should be in the middle of it, and this should be wider out. But if we mount it in the middle, it's going to get crushed. So we'll, we'll leave it in front. It'll be fine. Uh, that means the wheel is going to be mounted forward. So the wheel is going to be mounted to basically this block piece here. And the axle will go through that. Like so. We'll make sure we got this joint set to rotate. Um, that is fixed to that. That's fixed to that. That can rotate through. I think we're good to go. So that's stiff. Obviously, the suspension's not going to flex, but technically speaking... Oh, why is this? This is rotating. Oh, it's because we have an open differential. All the power's going to this side. See, the differential's working. We don't have a wheel on this side, so the motor's just constantly running because we didn't set the motor controls. And the differential's actually doing its job. That's perfect. We need to put some weight on this to test. There we go. And it works. Look at that. The axle bends with the suspension, keeps the wheel driving. And the suspension, like, I guess, completely implodes on itself, but it actually works. And it should transmit power once we have two. So let's duplicate this setup. And then just for now, I guess, you know what? For now, let's do this. We're just going to take this and put it way out to the front. And just put some front wheels. All right. I've got the setup duplicated. I've also put this motor on a WS control, which we can just, you know, we can do in this menu. We just set what devices we want to what. You can actually have just a ton of controls. It's got left and right hand. That's because the game has VR support, which is kind of awesome. You know, in case you want to actually, like, control your robot in VR. But anyway, we're going to see what happens here. So if we go forward... Unbelievable. Look at that. We're driving the motor through the differential to both wheels. Through suspension with a double CV joint setup. That's so cool. This is a big car, though. This is a very, very wide car. We could actually cut these back a little bit. We could make these arms a little narrower, which I think I'm going to do. Um, just because that is very wide. And to make this proportional, it would have to be very wide. But yeah, we'll cut these back by a couple blocks. Perfect. Easy enough. Covers up the differential. Obviously, we can move this whole thing back, but that'll all change depending on what we do with gearing and stuff later. And it should still... Oh, what's our... Our differential's not... Oh, hold on. Our differential's not attached to anything. That's amazing. It still works, though. Look at that. It gets pulled up on the, uh... On the CV joints, and then it just gets to its max distance. We need to mount the... I need a, a, a thing to mount the differential to. That's fine. That's an easy fix. All right, so for the front, we've got our frame rail set up here. I want to do the same thing. Uh, double wishbone suspension setup. And then we're going to use, like, a push rod. So we're going to have a CV joint that pushes the two pivot points front and back. It's literally going to be the same setup as this, almost. Except this point here needs to pivot about this rod there. It'll, it'll all work out. So... We're going to use the same mount points so we have the same dimensions as the suspension at the back. I think we put it there. And then we come out with these pieces uh, five distance. All right, we can copy and paste this down. Put it there. Excellent. And then we need another one on the middle. So that's our double wishbone suspension setup. Of course, we actually need, we need this in the middle. And the spring that goes on that. And that has to connect to... Well, actually, it can connect right to the frame rail here. It just needs to connect it to a static part of the vehicle. Perfect. So we've got our suspension in the front. This isn't really, like, a huge suspension travel. Don't get me wrong. It's not... Like, it still will work as suspension. And we'll put a huge weight on this afterwards to make sure. But it's not going to have, like, a crazy suspension travel, right? They're very small arms. And that's, of course, because of all the mechanisms we got to fit here in the middle. But I think it'll work good enough. And actually, we could have shrunk this... Could shrink it by one more block. We could move those in if we really wanted to make them slightly longer. But I think it'll be fine. 
just a proof of concept really anyway and it's gonna look pretty cool um so then to do the steering part of this this is where things get a little bit interesting we have to put a block there um and then we've got to use some blocks that aren't gonna have joints because basically we need to pivot about this oh shoot i don't have a pivot point for this this whole yeah this needs to go out so we can bring this out to here and then we can pivot about this but if we do that we're wider than these back wheels which so we basically need to move these in or we make the back wheels even wider all right sick we just put fat back wheels on it and now we can have this come out the extra block the problem is if we have it pivot there unless there is a block i can do it with but if we have a pivot there i guess maybe with pipes I could do it with pipes because pipes won't have uh no but then yeah it'll still interfere it's gonna when it tries to turn it to the left it's gonna interfere with this so that won't work it needs to pivot by this point out here so we're gonna just put this right and that'll be our pivot point and then we basically need to push this with a rod back and forth and depending on which way we push it will determine how we're turning and we can push it from a mechanism here in the middle and again using universal or cv joints not to actually have it rotate but just to have it act as a push rod um, in and out so this one is like this we can do the joints on this real quick so circle 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 free rotate free rotate free rotate free rotate right and then our wheel would be basically in the middle of this a little bit misaligned from the back wheels because the suspension it doesn't matter it's good enough this will work fine so that would be our wheel point perfect all right, our front wheels are going to be the smaller kind, but apparently there's no in-between. There's either the super thick or the super thin wheels. Is there, is this, no, see, these are all just really tiny. Yeah, they don't have any, they don't have any, like, thickness. I mean, I could double up these ones, but it's fine. It's a, it's an interesting car. So now the final thing we got to do is have a push rod that can push these from an input in the middle somewhere. Um, now, I don't know if I can do rack and pinion steering i could do something with the elevator climbs an attached rod with a connected motor so if i do that right and i put a rod in this and i hook it up to a servo motor because this will go to a specified angle yeah cool and then we can control this with like spin forward is nope not that spin forward is there and spin reverse is that and if we put a rod in here like what hat will this go in two directions like i'm i don't know how this works i've never actually tried this setup before what does this do oh that literally just spins the motor well that is very useful it does move the rod though you can see it so we got to mount the motor correctly but it's moving the rod as well so hold on a minute if i mount the motor to a proper thing like this there we go a little bracket does that if i go a look at that well that's cool and that's a servo motor, so it only goes between two positions. So now we just gotta, can I increase the positions on this motor? Max RPM 50, limit, let's go like, I don't know, 90? Maybe 180 even. This is the number of like rotations, I don't know how much that translates to linear movement, but let's see. Oh, that's pretty good. I think that's enough movement. Otherwise we'd have to gear it to get more movement out of it. That's gonna be perfect though, and then we'll push these wheels back and forth um max rpm max that out it doesn't return to zero can i tell it to return to zero show advanced start on max torque return to origin there we go perfect oh let's go this is gonna be sick this is gonna be perfect okay so now all we gotta do is connect this bad boy up so we need this to come out to here this whole mechanism is way too far out and back up by an entire block here we need the rod to extend out to the joint position and then we need to put some cv joints on this i think these could be universals as well i don't know if it would matter cv joints transfer constant velocity universals do not but they still spin i don't i don't honestly think it matters because we're only using this as a push system but anyway we do that and then we put a rod on each of these Perfect, and then this has to go extend out to the next joint position, which is there. Then we put another CV joint there. Whoops. Uh, no, I think this CV joint needs to be back one. Yes, in there. Perfect. So as we push this back and forth with the rod, we can turn our car. Would you look at that? 
Oh wait, do these need to- do those- I think these need to be fixed. Maybe I'm- I don't remember. Yeah, no, these need to be fixed. That's right. That's right. I think these need to be fixed. Yeah, there we- oh no, I jammed the steering. Alright, so we can move. That's good. It's a little bit shaky. We can steer, too. Our front wheels are, um... Still need to figure out that steering mechanism. I've got something fundamentally wrong here. I'm trying to think of what I'm missing on this wishbone suspension setup. And I normally, on a real car, you'd use, like, a McPherson strut or something. And it would be, like, a rack and pinion. It's a little bit hard to translate that to an in-game car. But, yeah, we don't have enough weight in the front. Oh, and our front wheels aren't turning. Oh my god, that would be that would be a, a good thing to actually do. Maybe have the front wheels turn. That would be. Oh, look at that! It actually drives now. What? A... Okay, well we didn't want to go there. What a crazy machine! Isn't it great when the wheels of the car actually turn? <laughs> this is awesome, though. It actually works. I think I, I need to re look up some some front wheel mechanisms. I need to re-engineer some things. But this thing is a monster. We got speed, we got suspension, we got a double wishbone setup, a differential setup, we've got steering with an actual like push rod system, which isn't great, I'll admit. I, uh, I, I need to research a little bit more. I think I could do maybe a McPherson strut setup in this game. I'm not exactly sure. You can see that everything's a little bit jittery, but it actually like seems like it works. I mean, let's put some weight on it just to be sure. Let's grab like a big slab and just, you know, Take this slab. This is a heavy block. And let's just put it right in the middle of the car. Something like that. Okay, our suspension is flexing. But we can, in fact, still drive and still turn. That's great. That's so great. Hey, excuse me, sir. Would you like a ride on my car? You are actually almost the right size for this car. This car is a little small, actually. I could have made it bigger. Come here. Come on. Get up. Get on top. Ride my car. Sir. Sir. Can you... Can you please... Yeah, you're excited. You're excited about this. the prospects of this car. Well, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I was really excited by this build. I really like it. I obviously want to check out the campaign stuff. I know they've added a whole ton of new parts and new stuff to the campaign. And uh, I want to check that out. But I really just want to build something with gears. And obviously this doesn't have a lot of gears. It just has this one differential setup at the back but it does have a functioning you know full out functioning steering mechanism and we're totally stuck on this conveyor belt now and i can't get off it's sick perfect perfect no it's good let's go back over there but yeah it's got a fully functioning like drivetrain setup and obviously not exactly ideal for this game but I think it's really cool that this game still lets you do that kind of stuff relatively easily too, you know? You don't have to worry about bearings and stuff. We just have to worry about like clearances and tolerances on all the different parts. But uh, we're also, I'm full, full driving here. It's not doing anything. We're just, we're just at the mercy of these conveyor belts. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know if Roboco is a game that you'd like to see more of on the channel. Like I said, we did play it a long time ago, but there have been some new levels to try. And obviously there's always new robots to make. I always like making little robots that have to do things, and especially in this game, there's all the grabbing arms and stuff like that. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure, of course, you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.